In this clip, I'm going to talk about the arrest warrant case decided by the International Court of Justice on 14th April 2002. This case involved two countries, the Democratic Republic of Congo on the, on the one hand and Belgium on the other hand. These two countries had a legal dispute over the treatment of this man, Mr. Yerodia. Mr. Yerodia was the Minister for Foreign Affairs in the Democratic Republic of Congo from 1999 to late 2000. The dispute between these two countries has arisen when the Belgian judge has issued the arrest warrant against Mr. Yerodia. According to the arrest warrant, Mr. Yerodia has committed war crimes as well as the crimes against humanity by inciting racial hatred against a particular segment of the country in, in the Democratic Republic of Congo. And this arrest warrant was issued at the time when Mr. Yerodia was still the Minister for Foreign Affairs. So after the issuance of this, um, this uh, arrest warrant, the Democratic Republic of Congo, or DRC, has commenced the proceedings against Belgium before the International Court of Justice, claiming that this arrest warrant violated the sovereignty of the DRC. So the question put forward before the International Court of Justice was the following. Did Belgium violate international law by issuing and also circulating the arrest warrant against Mr. Vierodia? Well, here, international law uh, means more specifically a uh, customary international law. There were several relevant treaties involved, but there were no specific treaty provisions which answered the question put forward before the International Court of Justice. So the primarily International Court of Justice needed to decide whether or not Belgium violated customary international law by issuing the arrest warrant against Mr. Yerodia. And in order to answer the question, usually the court needed to follow two different steps. The first step is to identify whether or not the Belgium indeed had a jurisdictional uh, basis in the first place. And once you find out that Belgium indeed had the jurisdictional basis, then the court uh, needed to decide whether or not there were some exceptions, including the jurisdictional immunities enjoyed by Mr. Yerodia. So on the first question, the jurisdictional basis, there were several grounds according to which a state can exercise jurisdiction under international law. That those uh, bases will include territoriality, personality, protec protection, and universality. So which jurisdictional bases are we talking about in this case? Well, the alleged crimes were not committed in the territory of Belgium, therefore territoriality is not applicable here. So what about the personality? Well, neither the victims nor the defendant uh, himself were the nationals of the, Bel of, of, of the Belgian country, of Belgium. Therefore, personality is not applicable either and no Belgian national security issues were involved, therefore the principle of a protective principle is, cannot be invoked in here. So the only jurisdictional basis that the court could have looked at was the principle of universality. But on this first step, um, unfortunately, the International Court of Justice did not elaborate on this issue. According to the court, well, let's assume that, there, uh, that Belgium indeed had a jurisdictional basis, and let's move on to the, the second step. So this avoidance of the question of the universality, the question of the, univer the principle of universal jurisdiction, was presumably due to the political as well as legal sens sensitivity involved in answering the question uh, of the universal principle. So
So the court decided to focus on the second step, which is the question of jurisdictional immunity. And in thinking about the second step, it is important to, um, to bear in mind that there are several different categories of jurisdictional immunities. States enjoyed jurisdictional immunities in other countries. And there are also jurisdictional immunities enjoyed by international organizations. But in this case, what we are talking about, uh, are, what we are talking about is a jurisdictional immunity enjoyed by state officials. And even if we said that what well, we are focusing on the jurisdictional immunities enjoyed by state officials, in this case, we are talking about a particular official who was uh, Mr. Rirodia, and he was at the time the Minister for Foreign Affairs of the Democratic Republic of Congo. And according to the International Court of Justice, certain high-ranking officials enjoyed indeed quite comprehensive jurisdictional immunity. So what do you mean by comprehensive? Well, certain high-ranking officials enjoyed immunities from jurisdiction not only with respect to their official act, but also their private act as well. So the activities during the weekend, if you like. And the certain high-ranking officials enjoyed immunities both from criminal and civil uh, jurisdiction. And so what about the case of Mr. Yerodia then? Well, according to the court, yes, indeed, uh, Mr. Riordia, as the foreign minister of uh, minister for foreign affairs, enjoyed this comprehensive personal immunity from jurisdiction. And why is that? Well, it's because of the functions enjoyed uh, to be fulfilled by the ministers for foreign affairs. According to the court, well, if you are a um, foreign minister you needed to be in touch with uh, many other countries all the time and you also you are also representing your own country so in order to fulfill this function um, he or she needed to be protected uh, um, by the jurisdictional immunities but in this case Belgian government argued but what about the gravity of crimes well, alleged crimes committed by Mr. Yerodia were war crimes and crimes against humanity. But according to the court, there were no customary international law that creates exception to the immuni jurisdictional immunities enjoyed by the foreign minister, minister on, the, on the basis of the gravity of the alleged crimes. Therefore, in conclusion, um, coming back to the overall question put forward uh, to the, the International Court of Justice, indeed Belgium violated custom and international law by issuing and also circulating the arrest warrant against Mr. Eurodia. And as a result of that, International Court of Justice requested the Belgian government to cancel the arrest warrant against Mr. Eurodia.